Hello everyone. Anything to anybody? Hello. How you doing everybody? We got a sun shower. It's sunny and it's raining. I just wanted to address real quick anybody who's in the stock market. <clears throat> I've been uh, mentioning this in the past couple months. And I think we are now at the point where you really need to do this. Today is Sunday, oh boy, 24th of September, 2023. And I think uh, if you own shares of Apple or NVIDIA or really anything, the mistake I see a lot of people doing, I was just talking to Dan about this, and if you have a, if you hold a stock or an ETF, you have a ticker. And number one, it's not paying a dividend. Number two, it doesn't have any premium in the options where you can make money selling covered calls or selling puts. And number three, if it's not appreciating. And number three is really what I'm touching on right now is regardless of whether the U.S. government shuts down or not, we have um, some disruptions in the market that are going to lead to volatility at best and a market crash at worst. I don't think we're going to see the same irrational enthusiasm that we've seen since May. There's a couple ways to do it. If you have, let's say you have Apple shares and you're like a bullish on Apple or Tesla or NVIDIA. I mean, name the, name the ticker. If you're bullish in your own mind, you've done your own due diligence, you think in a year, two years, three years, five years, you think that the future's rosy, then there's nothing wrong with, you know, buying and selling, going in and out of positions. Yes, it means that there are tax implications, but for most people, that's really not a big deal. At some point, you're going to have to take them anyways. So if Apple's at $175, it might be a good time to sell an aggressive in the money covered call and collect 10 $15 per share and if you lose the shares you turn around and you sell an aggressive in the money put yeah I um, I looked at this strategy for a friend back when a couple months ago and they were going to be able to make they didn't lose the shares but they were able to make I think at that time it was at least $15 a share so the beauty of selling a covered call is you may not lose the shares. You're basically just um, renting out the promise to sell your shares if it goes over a certain price. And you can set that price wherever you want. So one strategy to hedge yourself, if Apple's going to go down to $150 in the next two months, let's say that's the assumption, then... It may be, depending on the premiums offered, it may be a good bet to sell. I mean, that's very aggressive. You could sell a 150, 160. I've done that before where I was in the comments below. I will put what I would do with Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA. Those are the big high flyers. What are some others? Well, I'll start with those three at least. And I'll put some numbers in there. And at least for folks who aren't familiar with options, you really should be. Options are not something to be afraid of. Options are something that help you buy and sell at a discount. So, and to hedge yourself quite easily. So you're making money. You can hold shares and make money on those shares. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So, like when Apple, it, it works 
in a bull or a bear market, or I suppose sideways, depending on where you pick your strikes. Oh, a nice color. Volkswagen. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. I was thinking about this on the walk, and I think, um, you know, we're at danger, danger, Will Robinson times, where there really is a lot of risk right now. I think there's been a lot of risk for a while. And, and I said this to Dan as well. If you take away the stock market, and I'm interested in opinions on this, take away the stock market's performance over the last six months. And what does the, ha what does the United States government, and I mean the government shouldn't even be really involved in the stock market, but if you take away the stock market performance this year, what does the U.S. government have or have to say, look, we're doing great this year. Please put your answers below. That's one reason why they come out with the false numbers, the false data, because it's a joke. Because this past week, this past uh, week, we saw a drop in a lot of stocks. And I'm hearing these analysts saying, um... We didn't know that the Fed wasn't going to not raise rates or not drop rates. I'm like, the Fed has been saying that all year long. The market has just chose to ignore that because the thing that they do best is they pump and then they dump. That is what they do. And they especially love to dump because there's a saying where it says, you take the stairs up, and the, you go out the window going down. So gravity is much faster going down, going out the window. So when these things drop, I mean, this year we've had a, a lot of tickers who, NVIDIA, Meta, where they'll go up 50 or 100 points overnight. That's rare compared to how quickly they go down. So, <clears throat> so think about it this way. You know, if you do nothing, then you're at the mercy of the market. And investing means you want to generate, you know, an ROI on your, uh, on your money. And so if you can add 5 or 10% to your return for very little effort, I think you're crazy not to. And there's quite a few things you can do that are not real difficult. It's not difficult. Oh, he's the dumb dog. Yeah, this dog's a moron. Okay, signing off. Have a great day. Hola. Hola. Buen dia. Buen dia.